Hey guys, in this video I'm gonna show you how I groom Toby the Himalayan. Now this breed is known to be affectionate and pretty good for grooming. Also sassy and homeward bound was a Himalayan. All right, let's get to it. I'm going to be using a 15 blade on a Wal Bavera with my five and one blade and I'm going to shave his entire belly. Toby really does not mind this part. I'm able just to turn him around on his back and shave his belly without a problem and he'll just literally lay there and sometimes I catch him closing his eyes. Next, I'm going to clip his nails before his bath. Now I go ahead and clip every cat's nails before the bath, just in case they go to scratch me. Because if I do the leave them long, then their nails will go through my skin like butter. Here is Toby waiting patiently for me to dilute his shampoo and I'm bathing him with menthol shampoo by Double K and guys, this is his favorite part of it all. This guy has about four coats of fur on him so I'm just making sure that I'm massaging in that shampoo really well so it's getting to the root. With him, I take a cotton ball, I wet it really well, and I put some blueberry facial shampoo so I could go ahead and loosen up all of his little eye buggies. Himalayans are essentially a crossbreed between Siamese and Persians, and just like Persians, they have that scrunched up face, so it's really important to clean out in between their eyes very well and within their wrinkles. Now the comb that I'm using to clean his face is a flea comb. I'll link this below. This works very well for the face and also for any eye buggers that you might have to pick out. I told you guys that he really enjoys this part. When it comes to me cleaning his eyes and his face, he loves to rest his head at the end of the tub and just let me do my thing. It's pretty much the cutest little thing ever. All right, now I am starting to rinse them off with lukewarm to hot water. Cats really, really like very warm water. Also, I'm making sure that I'm getting all that shampoo out of his fur. His fur is very thick, so I make sure that I take my time rinsing him fully. Now I will never spray a hose directly to a cat's face because that would be a really good way to get them upset. To rinse their face, I just put a little bit of water on the palm of my hand and sprinkle it on their face. And then when I rinse their neck, I'm making sure that I'm not holding that hose too tight so the water pressure isn't too strong. And I just had to kiss him because he is so cute, my little blue eyed boy. Okay, so with long-haired cats, I do not use a regular towel. I do use a chamois because it collects about 90% of the water on them, and I will show you when I rinse this towel off. All right, look how much water I got off of him. Ready? Bam. And I'll just repeat this cycle like twice. All right, so before I dry him, I always put a cone around his neck just to protect him from the air of the force dryer. And also he does not like his back legs dried. So this gives me some time to get out of his way before he strikes. 
Now I am spraying him with quadruple sleeve and conditioner. This is going to help me take out all of his undercoat, do a shedless treatment on him, and brush him out. Now I want you guys to see his coat is really clumped together, so I'm gonna need a special hand from my friend Ice on Ice by Chris Christensen. So the spray top broke, so I'm just gonna use my hand to go ahead and lather up all this product within his coat. Now that he's all conditioned up, I'm going to take my slicker brush by Chris Christensen and I am going to brush him out fully before drying him. To dry him, I always use my flat nozzle. I never use my narrow one because the narrow one would be too forceful for him. Now, as you can see, all of his fur is clumped together, so I'm going to use that flat nozzle to help me just break up all those mats and undercoat that he has. The drying part could be pretty therapeutic because it is pretty rewarding to see all those mats just loosen up and all that undercoat just fly off of him. Now when grooming a long haired cat and doing a deshedding treatment, especially in an enclosed space like a grooming van, it is imperative to wear a mask and protect yourself. All right, so he did have some mats that I could not break apart with just drying him or with the slicker brush. So here I am with my dematting tool, just getting those mats out. Now I always pass a comb after I demat just to make sure that those mats are all the way out and I'm just gonna keep drying him and keep brushing him fully. To dry Toby's face, I put my dryer on a low setting and I also take off all the nozzles so there is not added pressure and I just pet his head while I dry his face and usually he's very, very good. He really doesn't mind this part at all. Look how cute he is. As you're going to see here, he does have a huge mat on his neck and no worries, I will take that out. One thing about Toby is that he loves a good chin rub. Toby's body is now fully dried and as you can see, that leave-in conditioner, my brushing out and the dryer put in some work and his fur is looking fabulous. For the mat by his neck, I'm going to take my dematting tool and I'm gonna hold the base of that mat so it's not really pulling on him too much. And then I'm gonna take my comb and make sure that the mat is fully out. As much as he likes chin rubs, he also likes me brushing out his mane right underneath his chin. He stays very still for this. Now I'm gonna turn him over on his back just to make sure that his belly is nice and neat. I shaved his belly and his armpits just to avoid matting in the future. Now I'm taking my 40 blade and I'm shaving underneath his paw pads and I'm also going to shape up his paw pads with scissors to make them nice and round and neat. Now when shaving a cat's paw pad, I do not dig in between their paw pads, I just do it surface level. Now to round out his paw pads, I am using Solita Curved Asian Fusion Scissors. I will link these below.
Now you will see here Toby letting me know that he does not like what I'm doing. He just goes ahead and bites me so he gets the cone put on him. For one of the final steps, I'm going to clean out Toby's ears. I will put in the links below what I use as an ear cleaner. It is very gentle. I just use a cotton ball and make sure that I'm getting all the crevices. While giving Toby his final blowout, he decided he didn't want any more, so he bit me and let me know that. So I turned off the dryer and I'm gonna show you guys what he did to my arm. It wasn't too bad, but the teeth marks are definitely there. Toby is now all done. I am just going over him one more time with the comb just to be sure that I got all his undercoat out and no snaggles are in his fur. One of the last things I'm going to do is make sure that I trim his butt area pretty tightly just to avoid feces and litter staying on him. Here he is guys, this is the final product. He feels so smooth, so soft, he's fully brushed out. I think he's happy even though he bit me twice. I won't hold it against him. It's always a pleasure to groom him. I love this guy. He's one of my favorite kitties that I groom even though he can be temperamental but I don't judge. Bye guys, thank you guys so much for watching. If you learned anything new and if you like this video, please hit the like button, please hit the subscribe button. I love sharing what I do with you guys. Till next time, up and out, love and light, Laura Ventura.